But before we start, you already know, smash the like button for more fire content. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. For all the newcomers, welcome to Team Miley. Make sure to follow Team Miley on our IG page, TikTok, Twitter, and Twitch for more defensive back tips and tricks. This week, route of the week, the comeback. We're going to talk about how to play the comeback, impress, off man, the alignment of the receiver, and the route depth. So let's get into it. All right, so first thing first, you already know, top of the numbers, we expect an outside breaking routes, especially when we're at the near hash. Now, the comeback is a little different. They want to kind of create a little bit more space so they can have more space to catch the comeback route by the sideline. Usually comeback routes is one of those catches, one of those passes where it's a catch step out of bounds because they get really close to the sideline. So as a receiver, he's going to line up around here, top of the numbers for sure, maybe a yard, maybe two yards away from the top of the numbers. All right. First thing first, near hash, top of the numbers, about a yard or two above it. Now, when receivers run the comeback, it's usually around 15-ish yards, right? I say 15-ish yards because it could be 18 back to 15. It could be 15 back to 12. The biggest key, our key, is when we're running with the comeback is reading the receiver's hip. We see the hip drop. There's a few indicators that we can know to anticipate a comeback. First thing first is the hip drop, right? So the hip drop. So as we're covering the, covering the receiver, right? Eyes are disciplined on the hip, right? We get When he gets around 15 yards, so we just pass 5, 10, get to fear. This is when usually they start to drop the hip. When they start to drop the hip and turn, boom, we want to always break to the upfield shoulder. Very important. The reason why I want to break to the upfield shoulder because a lot of times they're on that comeback and go, right? They see a DB being aggressive, trying to undercut the comeback. Come back and go, nobody's there. So you got to be disciplined to the upfield shoulder. As he's breaking right here with the upfield shoulder, this is the perfect time where we can look back for the ball because now if we see the ball we can slip it and go make a play now if we don't see the ball right we don't see it we get our eyes back on him he runs that comeback and go we ride on it and we're ready to run with it second indicator now a lot of times this is a lot of a bad habit a lot of receivers do as when they're running the comeback they start to look back before they get to 15 yards so as he's running his comeback he gets a five he starts to look back why is he looking back the quarterback's not throwing the ball right there right now he's getting ready to drop his hip boom 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 Boom. The reason why they're looking back early is because they want to get us to look back too so we don't see the hip drop. You got to pay attention to those little details, right? You see him looking back before 10 yards, what, what route do you really expect him to do, right? We want to be disciplined. The eyes should be on the hip so we shouldn't even see him looking back. And then he gets that hip drop. Boom. We on it. Make a play. I'm run, and they're going to drop the hip early and just take off again because now they want us to stutter and now they know that we're on top of the route. So they wanna make sure we stop our feet so they can close the space a little bit faster so we open up early and then for them to run the comeback, right? So you gotta make sure when they run it, we stay square, he drop his hip, boom, we don't jump. And now we break our cushion, now we're in good position to make sure we break on the comeback. And a lot of receivers do this and it's a really bad habit, I don't know why they do it, is when they, as soon as they get off the ball, they put their hand up like they're open. Like, that's not fooling anybody. We know you're going to run a comeback. Why are we going to look back as soon as you run the ball, you put your hand up, right? So as soon as he put his hand up like he's open, boom, he's going to try to snap you up, snap his hip down, and then he's going to run that comeback. So we got to make sure we don't fall for those little things. Keep your eyes disciplined on the receiver's hips. Make sure you see the hip drop, right? Don't look for the head. Don't look for the hand up. Don't fall for the stutter and go come back, right? All those little things. It's very important. So understand how the receiver runs the route. Watch film on the receiver when you get a chance. Understand his split, his alignment, where he aligns that and all that stuff because all that stuff will definitely tell you what he's going to run. So when we're impressed, you already know, top of the numbers, right? Nah, you could kind of be a little bit head up, but you still always want to be careful and take away the inside, right? Kind of want to force the outside release. So as he gives a release, boom, be patient, shoot that hand. You want to force him closer to the sideline. Now, as we're forcing him closer to the sideline, eyes on the hip. As we get to 15, boom, 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 you see that hip drop, boom. Now he's getting less space to make, a, to make this pass, right? Less space to make the pass, less space for him to make the catch. So now you want to limit the space, very important. Limit the space, be on the upfield shoulder, and go make a play. Typical release we get against a comeback is a speed release, but they try to stack us immediately. So if you give us a speed release, boom, and they try to stack us right behind us. So now they have a two-way go. We do not want to ever get stacked. Very important. All right. So in order to stop that, right, you got to be very patient, boom, ready to kick and shoot your hand. So now we can't get stacked, right? If he's going to try to stack us, we shouldn't allow because we're in perfect position to get our hands on him 
and force them wider. Another release right here is they're gonna try to move us inside a little bit. So they're gonna try to move, boom, make us move, and then try to create more space outside. And they're gonna try to stack us again too. So as, you, as a DB, we here, he moves inside, boom, shoot that hand, boom. Now he can't stack us. We're in great position. We're running with the hip, all right? So remember those key releases right there. They're not really gonna do an inside release to run a comeback. If they do an inside release and run a comeback, that's, you know, that's wasting a little bit too much time and we're gonna be in perfect position for the comeback. So they're really gonna try to force the outside release, really gonna try to make us move inside a little bit to create more space outside. They're gonna try to stack us. So make sure you don't get stacked, make sure you're disciplined, move with the hip, get hands on and force the wide release. Now we're playing off man, right? You already know seven yards, inside leverage, slightly, probably head up a little bit, but you kind of want to shade a little bit inside just in case, right? Now, biggest thing is they will try to stem us. So as they stem us, we got to weave. Weave squares us up. Now they're creating more space outside. So as they're creating more space, we're going to weave back to that hip, stay inside shade, and when he break, we're going to break to the upfield shoulder and then be there for to make the play, all right? The key is to very be, to be patient and stay square in your pedal. We don't want to open up early, right? We want to stay square in our pedal. When they stem us, we want to weave. Very important. We want to weave so we can stay square in our pedal so now we can get a good angle on our brakes. As we're covering this route, right, you remember the 5, 10, 15 yards, right? You got to have that in your mind. As you're pedaling, right, you're reading the receiver, he passed 5 yards, so you now you're eliminating routes as he's running. Right? So he passed five yards, so all the short routes is gone. He passed 10 yards, right? All the intermediate routes is gone. Where they break for the post, the digs, you know, the deep out. So now they're going, if we get to 15, there's only two routes that they can really run. It's either the comeback or the fade, right? So now as we're pedaling, we're reading the hip. This is where they start to break our cushion, right? So as we're running, we want to open up, keep our cushion. We see the hip drop, we know it's a comeback. So we break on the upfield shoulder. If the hip don't drop, and he's past 15 yards, boom, that's when we get into that lean and locate. So you gotta be disciplined. Eliminate routes as you're pedaling, right? And remember your cushion. When he breaks our cushion, we gotta really open up. Don't gradually open up. Really snap that hip and get ready to run. Because if it's a fade, we gotta be on, on time and you gotta be on point with it. So now, when the ball is on the opposite hash, the far hash, right? First of all, that's a far throw to run, to throw a comeback from the opposite hash all the way to this sideline, right? So the receiver is not gonna line up normal split where we talked about earlier. He's gonna try to split it. He's gonna try to get a little bit closer to the quarterback to make it an easier throw. Not a lot of quarterbacks can make this throw, especially high school quarterbacks. If a high school quarterback can make this throw, he's going D1, he's legit, right? That's a, a big time throw that a lot of quarterbacks can't really do. So you gotta be watching film and understand, okay, can he make that throw? Is he making it on time? Because a lot of quarterbacks that can throw it but would it get there on time? Is it gonna be on a line drive or is it gonna be a lot of air? Now, when we're covering this route, you gotta understand you have a little bit more time. So when we're playing off man, we can adjust our leverage, right? He's climbing closer to the, to the quarterback so we can kind of be outside leverage, head up to outside leverage, right? Now, the biggest thing is we still wanna stay square. We're pedaling, so if we're pedaling, right? We wanna stay square. If he starts to stem us, we're gonna weave and protect the leverage. Now, the key is when we break, we have to make sure we break on the upfield shoulder. There's a lot of space. This is a perfect time for them to run a comeback and go because a lot of times throwing this ball from the opposite hash to the sideline is a far throw. So when we break on it, we got to break to the upfield shoulder and we have more time to slip the hip because it's a far throw. So as he's running, boom, boom, five, we're eliminating route, 10, we're eliminating route, right? Get to 15, you see the hip drop, boom, boom, boom. Now we have time, right? He's in front of us, we can look back for the ball, boom, and now we see the ball, we can slip the hip. If we don't see the ball, boom, he runs to come back and go, boom, get into that lean and locate, go make a play. All right, so make sure you're disciplined, understand it's a far throw. You got a little bit more time, but you still want to make sure you're right there at the right moment so you can see everything. So remember, you got more time here because it's a far throw. Now, when we break on the upfield shoulder, you got time to look back for the ball because the receiver's in front of you. Don't try to slip the hip immediately and break underneath it without seeing the receiver. Keep the receiver in front of you so now you can see the ball if it's thrown. Now you can take a good angle to make the play, or you can be on the upfield shoulder if you need to play the hands of the receiver, or just in case it's a double move. Now, when the receiver is telling the coach and the QB, man, he's sitting on my routes, he's jumping it, 
well, let's run a double move on him. So when the receiver is telling the quarterback and the offensive coordinator, hey, he's sitting on my routes, this is where we can expect a double move, right? So now there's two ways of running the double move off a comeback and go, right? Receiver's running, right? He's running. He's going to either drop his hip and then take off. That's the first route, first way of running to come back and go. Against them, a double move here by A.J. Green. You see him, he's sitting right at the sticks, and that's where he ran the double move, and Diggs is going to jump it. The second one is going to be when he's running, he's going to drop his hip and slightly turn and then take off again. So this is why we got to be very important that we break to the upfield shoulder. If he breaks, come back, boom, we're here on the upfield shoulder, and then he turns up, he runs right into us, we can lean and locate and get ready to make the play. If he does the first one where he just drop his hip, boom, boom, we drop his hip, and then we right in good position to run with him, right? So we got to be disciplined with our eyes, make sure we break on the upfield shoulder, and make sure if he turns, we collision the route too. So boom, turn, collision the route, boom, and get in that hip and be ready to make the play. A lot of times when they run this route, going to be about, they do the, the double move around 10 to 15-ish around that area, right? Because now they got to take off and go run to make a play. So we're going to make sure we break on the upfield shoulder, collision the route, and when we break an upfield shoulder and collision the route, we're going to lean and locate immediately because they're not going to run anything else. They're not going to run a comeback and go and then come back again. They're going to try to mimic the route as close as possible to a regular comeback. So they're going to make everything look the same. They might stem us the same way. They might run at the same tempo and everything, but you got to make sure your eyes are disciplined and you take a good angle always break on the upfield shoulder, very important. If you break on the upfield shoulder, you can make you can make a play every time. Break on the upfield shoulder, you can either slip the hip. Break on the upfield shoulder, it's a double move, you can collision the route, lean and locate, go make a play. So now we're at the goal line. We're covering the comeback at the goal line. You already know, you gotta be square, be patient, get hands on the receiver. The receiver's gonna run the comeback, he's gonna make it seem like it's a fade. So he's gonna try to push you vertical, fade off a little bit, but he's gonna be a little bit tighter so there's more space to the sideline. The key right here is always to get hands on the receiver and man turn. The reason why we want a man turn is because when we turn and zone turn, we're not gonna see the receiver make us break for the comeback. So we want a man turn, face the receiver, and then when he breaks for the comeback, we can break on the upfield shoulder and make a play on the ball. Go along, you always wanna take the inside release away, so you wanna line up inside shade. So as he comes vertical, run at me, boom. You wanna move your feet, stay square, get hands on him. As he's running vertical, boom, he's gonna to try to stay straight. He's gonna to try to create all that space over there by doing that. So he's gonna fade off a little bit like he's running a fade, and he's gonna to break to the comeback right here. So now he has all this space for the comeback to, for the quarterback to throw the ball for him to catch the ball. You gotta make sure you get hands on, man turn, and see the break. So now we're in great position to make a play on the ball. Now when covering this, the receiver is gonna do a little things going to do things a little bit different. He might look back to the quarterback like the ball's coming. So you got to be patient. This is why we man turn because just in case we do look back and we got hands on him, we'd be able to feel him break. So we want to make sure we're here. Now if he breaks, boom, boom, boom. Okay, we're right here and we're in great position to make a play on the ball. So let's recap, all right? We talked about the receiver's alignment, right? Two yards, definitely on top of the numbers, about two yards above the numbers, right? Now he's creating more space to use the sideline, right? When the ball is on the far hash, he's gonna split the hash of numbers. He might be a little bit closer to the hash. You're expecting an outbreak in route. So adjust our leverage, right? Remember, it's a far throw. Not a lot of quarterbacks can make that throw on time. So understand, when you watch a film, see how the quarterback throws that, that ball from the far hash all the way to the sideline on a comeback, all right? When we're playing press, understand the releases that they're gonna give us. They're not gonna give us an inside release to try to run a comeback, right? They're gonna try to move us inside a little bit, take an outside release and stack us. Or they might do a speed release and immediately stack us. So make sure we move our feet, shoot our hands, force the wide release so we don't get stacked. Off man, understand we want to stay square as long as possible. Understand when the receivers uh, stem us, we want to weave and protect our leverage, right? Now, when they break, we want to break on the upfield shoulder so we can position to either see the ball so we can slip it, or if it's a double move, we can collision the route and run with it. When it comes to the double move, understand how the receiver runs their route. Remember, they're gonna try to mimic every little detail of that comeback to make it seem like it's a comeback and run that comeback and go. So be disciplined, keep your eyes on the hip, see the hip drop. Remember, if they drop their hip and keep going, we know it's a comeback and go. If they slightly drop their hip, turn, we break on the upfield shoulder, collision the route, 
and run and get in that position to lean and locate and go make a play. Understand all these little details to help you stop the comeback, right? Come back and go. Watch film. Understand the receiver's alignment. It could be a little bit different from different teams. When you watch film, study the receiver. How does he run his comeback in press and off man? Understand how the quarterback throws the ball from the far hash all the way to the sideline. Is it on time? Does he put a lot of air in it? Do we have time to break and make a play on the ball? And study the comeback and go. How does the receiver run his comeback and go? Is it the same as his regular comeback or does he change it a little bit? All these little things are indicators that can help you stop the comeback and go. That's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to drop a like on the video for more fire content. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our different platforms, IG, TikTok, Twitter, and Twitch. Make sure to stay tuned for more Route of the Week. Make sure to comment below the next Route of the Week you want to see. Make sure to share this with everybody you know and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.